first we will begin with the single letter phonograms, except for one surprise that we will find when we start the phonograms. It won't be a single letter phonogram. We'll find that in a few minutes. Right now we want to talk about the way we write the phonograms and hear the sounds at the same time. So we're going to learn the sounds and we're going to learn how to write the phonogram as well. Before we begin phonogram practice, we have to learn our strokes. Remember learning your strokes? And here they are right now, right here on our clock chart. So we have a clock showing two on the clock. And when we make round clock strokes, we always go up and around to ten. And we, hit, we touch each point on the clock to make the phonogram that we need to make. These are the basic strokes that we need for learning all of the phonograms. The first one you learned was the clock stroke. Remember it begins where? At two, two on, on the clock. clock. Very good. And then we and it is short. We can also have a tall clock stroke, can't we? That goes up to the top. And two is below the top line. Then we have the short line stroke. It starts at the dotted line and it goes straight down. All lines go down. Then we have the short line with the bottom part. It also starts at the dotted line and it goes halfway below. It doesn't touch the line below. See the line below on the, I drew a clock paper on the board and so here's the top line where you start if it's tall and you don't touch the top and then you go down to the baseline. But we were talking about the short one with the bottom part so that starts at the dotted line and goes down to the baseline and then you drop below halfway. You don't go all the way to the line below. So that's the short line with the bottom part, and then there's the tall line. It starts at the top, like I told you, but what? Does not it doesn't touch, touch the, the top. top. It goes down and sits on the baseline. Don't fall through. Then there's the slanted line in the correct direction. It's also short, and it begins at the dotted line, and it goes to the baseline. Don't fall through. Then there's the dash. In the direction we read and write, it's above the dotted line. Sometimes this line is smaller than this, and sometimes it's long. Then we have the slanted line in the wrong direction. It begins at the dotted line, and it goes to the baseline. Don't fall through. Those are all of the strokes you need to learn how to write the phonograms. So we'll begin with this one. First, I'm going to tell you the sounds. Are you ready? Listen carefully to them. I will say them, and then you will say them with me. A, 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 A. Now you say it. A, 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 A. Very good. Before we write it, I want you to see that this is the way we write it with the pencil. See the top line and the base line and the dotted line? This is the fancy way, the way we see it in a book when we read it or when we type on a, on a computer or a typewriter. Do you remember what a typewriter is? <laughs> Okay, so this is the way we write it. We want you to see both ways so that you know it's the same thing. Does it look like the same thing? They look pretty close. They're a little different, aren't they? That's why we call that the fancy one. It's a little fancier. So we're just going to do the simple one. Doesn't that look easier to write? Mm -hmm. And when you do artwork, maybe you can draw that. Okay? All right. So let's listen to the sound one more time. A, 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 A. Say it. A, 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 A. How many sounds? Four. Four. I saw you counting. Good job. Now let's learn how we're going to write the A, 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 A. Before I tell you really quick, I'm going to go over the lines on the clock paper. We know this is what line? The top, the top line. line. And it can be called the first baseline because sometimes we write titles, especially in your spelling notebook. So that gets to be both. Then we have the middle what? The middle line. Dotted line. And then we have the baseline. baseline. Very good. And then it starts all over again. This is the next top line, dotted line, baseline, top line, dotted line, baseline, and so on, all the way to the bottom of your paper. And then there's a clock on your paper to remind you to, to begin at two for clock strokes and to touch the points on the clock. There are other points on the clock that we use with some of the other phonograms that we'll learn when we do the different phonograms, okay? So let's start with A, 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 A. It is a short phonogram. It's a clock stroke. We always begin at the left margin line. This is the left margin line. See, it's written right here. This is the right margin line. We always go in the direction we read and write. So we begin at the beginning. 
Usually we put our name on this line and the date when we start to write our date in, the kin in kindergarten. You already write your date in first grade, don't you? So then we start writing on the next line. So we're going to write this now. It's short, remember? Two on the clock. It will start below the dotted line. That's where two on the clock would be. So I'm going to make a starting dot to help me remember where two on the clock is. But I also have to remember to count over one clock space. So I have to do that so that when, my, when I write the phonogram, I won't be off of the paper. So I have to start at the left margin line and count over. Will you point up here and help me to count over? Ready? One. And I'm going to make my dot below the dotted line. Does that look like it would be two on the clock below the dotted line? See, here's a dotted line and it's showing you two below the dotted line. So I'm going to begin at two. Then I'm going to go up, around to ten, to the eight on the clock, that's right there, to the baseline, to the four, back to the two, stop, and go straight down. Did you notice that I kept my pen on the board the whole time? Because it's one stroke. Let's do it again. Count over with me. Can you help me count over? One. So I'm going to make my two on the clock dot. Read it with me again. A, 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 A. Let's write it again. You say it with me, okay? Two on the clock, up around to ten, to the eight, to the baseline, to the four, to the two, stop, and go straight down. We didn't pick up our pencil, did we? Okay, so that's two on the clock, ten on the clock, eight on the clock, and four on the clock. Now you write it. Are you ready? Feet. Flat. Blocks. Flat. Both here. Flat. Paper. Are you checking these things? Paper moving hand needs to be by the clock. We didn't tell about that yet. Can you hold up your paper moving hand so the camera can see you? Just your hand. That's your other hand, isn't it? No, no, you were correct. Now I'm mixing you up. Your, uh, the hand that isn't holding your pencil is the paper moving hand, and it stays by the clock, unless you're a left-handed person. And then your paper moving hand, can you show me? Let's pretend that you're left-handed. Tilt your paper the other way, this way. And now, take, now hold up your paper moving hand. And the other hand would hold the pencil, right? Now go back to the way you write. Pencil check. Say ping, ping, ping. Very good. Begin below the clock. Move your fingers behind the end of the paint. Let me tell everybody what that means. When we move our fingers behind the end of the paint, that means that somebody's getting too close to the tip of the pencil. So we need to move our fingers so that they're behind the end of the paint on the pencil. We also don't want to be too high up, do we? So when I say fingers behind the end of the pencil, that means move your fingers up so they're just at the end of that paint, but not past it, right? You see? Not past it, but behind the end of the paint, okay? So everybody, fingers behind the end of the paint. All right, eyes up here, read the phonogram again. Uh, a, a, uh, a, uh. two on the clock below the dotted line. Did you count over one clock space? Pencil check. Pencil check. Ready? Two on the clock, put your heads up, nice and tall. What happened to those stacked blocks? Move your fingers behind the paint. I see some things we need to practice. Very good. Now you can see and you won't have to bend your head down to see, will you? All right, two on the clock, hold it there, and then look up here to read the phonogram one more time. A, 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 two on the clock, stay with me. Up, around to 10, to the eight, to the baseline, to the four, to the two, stop at two, and go straight down. Very good. No erasing in kindergarten, uh-oh. If you make a mistake in kindergarten, all you have to do is put a slanted line through it and go on to the next one because you're practicing. See, you don't have to erase, but you may in first grade, I'm sure. So right now, you don't have to you erase. You may just cross it out with a slanted line, okay? All right, go ahead and put your pencil down. And just so everybody knows that we'll be watching the tape and our parents that are visiting, that kindergarten students for homework, they usually do three in a row or they do groups of three. So that's a group of three, so you would move over two clock spaces. One, two. 
and then you would do three more. Two on the clock, up around to ten, to the eight, to the baseline, to the four, to the two, stop and go straight down. So you do three more. You do three, and then you may also do another group of three. You would count over two clock spaces so that you have one space in between. Okay? So that's how they, the kindergartners practice at home. 